Welcome to In Depth. I'm Don Smith, and today we're talking with West Virginia Auditor J.B. McCuskey. Auditor McCuskey, I've been in this business for 35 years, and in preparing for this interview, I spent some time on your website, and I learned more about the auditor's office in just a few days and glancing through the information there than I, than I knew in my career. It's amazing all you guys handle, and not just at the state level, but at the county level. Can you take a few moments and just give us a rundown of what you're doing over there? Sure. So let me start by saying, uh, giving a little shout out to our IT people. Um, we really do have a great website. And uh, to the IT guys out there from the auditor's office, good job. Um, they work really hard to make it user friendly um, and accessible. So the auditor's office is sort of an enigma to a lot of people. You're not alone in not really understanding always what we do. Um, but we have several main divisions. So the the the, a large part of our office is ensuring that all the state spending that is done is legal and a, according to an appropriation. So we have people that go through the line items in the budget and every basically every dollar that's spent, they make sure that it was spent legally and appropriately. That's a large chunk. Another chunk of our office is what's called CID and the Chief Inspectors Division, uh, as I call it, they are in charge of auditing the cities and the counties of the state. They also audit things like library boards. Um, uh, waste authorities, any, any, essentially any sub-governmental agency that uses public money. That it, was a surprise to me in that I was thinking the state auditor dealt with state, but actually you do more with the counties than you do in the, in the cities and other groups than you do legislative bodies or government bodies. Aud audit functionality, that is absolutely correct. Um, the, the state's legislative auditor is who performs the auditing functions on the executive branch agencies as well as the Supreme Court and the legislature. Um, the idea there in being from the framers, my guess is, is that uh, the legislature should be in charge of auditing the executive branch as part of the checks and balances. Um, and then on top of those other two things that we do, uh, we're in charge of selling delinquent property. So for 54 of the 55 counties in West Virginia, our office uh, performs the auction for taxes that have been okay. gone delinquent. And so we collect the money and then redistribute it. And what's really important about that is those tax dollars are what fund our schools. So we have to be uh, very diligent um, in ensuring that we are doing all we can to make sure those sales happen very quickly. Oh, great, great. I know that uh, the website, wfvsao.gov, if you go and look, it's uh, incredible the amount of information you have. And you guys are working to add more information all the time. And, and to make it user-friendly, which I think is something to the, for the public, I attended a joint standing committee during the interims, and you were there to speak to the committee about your office and about some of the uh, the new programs you have in place. And it was it was very impressive. I'd like to talk a little bit about those if I could. And the one presentation was on a program called Open Gov. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So uh, when I was campaigning, one of the things that I talked a lot about was that um, the enemy of any democracy is an uneducated electorate. And it is part of the auditor's job, in my opinion, and it is part of my duty to ensure that every citizen has access to how their money is being spent. Uh, I mean, as you know, the money that comes into the capital is never the government's money. It's always the people's money. Um, and so what we have undertaken is to establish the best public transparency website in the country. Um, I believe that we have accomplished that, uh, and we're going to be rolling that out to the public here uh, within the next three weeks. And what you will find as the citizens of West Virginia is that on our website you can go on in sort of a, a Google-like environment, find how in basically real time your money is being spent by your state government. Uh, you'll find a contact information for somebody from an agency if you have a question about why that money was spent. Um, and you'll have the ability to run reports and charts just the same as your legislators can so that you can come to your legislator say, I believe we should be pri prioritizing our spending differently and hopefully give them the information they need to enact the changes that our citizens want. Now that, that's information that it, it was either realistically <coughs> not possible to get, difficult to get, or might have required a FOIA uh, re request to get before. What, what prompted you to move in that direction? So uh, just in, in general, I believe it is our obligation to ensure that that information is available. And like everything else I do, I try very hard to be the best as, as possible at it. And OpenGov is a company who is really an industry leader. Um, and they are led by John Chambers, who is a, a native West Virginian and has been just an absolutely invaluable resource to us. This is an initiative that he undertook because he believes in the value of uh, the public being informed 
and of governmental transparency. And so he is, I believe, the chairman of the board at OpenGov um, and is really making a big push, not just in America, but throughout the world, to ensure that this information is available to, to citizens. Great. I know that before your term, you came into office as auditor, you spent two terms in the House mm -hmm. uh, as a delegate dealing with these questions, some of these problems. How did that help or, or give you some guidance when you got into office? Well, a couple things. So one of the wonderful things about having been in the House of Delegates is I have a lot of friends in the legislature. And so uh, when my office needs legislation or, or requests legislation, I'm able to um, use my, my contacts and my friends to try to help get some of that stuff through. Um, but on top of that, I had a pretty unique understanding of how our legislature worked and the kind of information that they needed in order to do their jobs properly. And so I found my time in the legislature in my first year as the auditor to be truly invaluable. Great, great. The, speaking of the legislature and the auditor's office requesting bills or working on legislation, uh, during your time in the House, was that common that you saw bills coming from the auditor's office? Is that something that happens frequently or uh, is that a, sort of a new thing for you too? I don't recall seeing a terrible amount of bills coming from the auditor's office, but that doesn't mean that they weren't there. Right. Um, you know, serving on the Judiciary Committee, it's very possible that those bills would have gone through finance or GovOrg, and, and I may not have seen them, so okay. um, I, don't, I don't actually know. Okay, well that, <laughs> but that, that brings me to a point I wanted to ask about, because you have a bill coming out maybe today or right a, soon that addresses fraud, accountability, and transparency. Yeah. Uh, now, a couple things. Your experience in terms of writing bills or getting bills prepared, I think, would pay off. But tell us a little bit about that bill in particular. So that bill um, works on a, a couple things. The first is, is, is Delegate Kelly Sabonia for years has had a government transparency initiative uh, bill. And we were really happy to work with her to get that incorporated into this bill. And what it does is it essentially codifies our website. And it ensures that the agencies have to provide us with information in a certain way so that we can get it back out to the public properly. Uh, and effectively, and it ensures that the public is going to always have a website that is going to give them that kind of information. On the fraud aspect of the bill, what it does is it, is it codifies some of our office's ability to, um, to aid our state's prosecutors and sheriffs in prosecuting uh, crimes against the citizenry. Um, since we have begun our fraud unit in the, in the auditor's office this year, we have 19 new open cases of government fraud. Um, and, you know, what happens is, and this isn't an indictment of anybody, but these are oftentimes smaller fraud cases, and these prosecutors in our state are awesome, and they work with their tails off, but they've got drug cases, murder cases, rape cases, they've got a, a bunch of really, really mm -hmm. difficult cases to work, and sometimes these smaller fraud cases get stuck on the bottom. And so what we have undertaken to do is to be their resource to work up the cases for prosecution, give them back to the prosecutor, and then let them do what they do right, because we have the resources. We have investigators and forensic accountants who are able to work these cases quickly and efficiently. Well, that's great. I know that my time across the state at the Martinsburg Journal, uh, the Intermountain Elkins, the Wetzel Chronicle in Wheeling, uh, working, covering courts and working with prosecutors, they were always overloaded, mm -hmm. and it was a, a massive challenge. That being said, from what I've seen with your office, you haven't increased staff. Uh, you're taking on a lot of work, but it seems like you've been able to be pretty efficient with that. Can you tell us about that? Um, our office is running, in, in the exact percentage might be off, but it's roughly 25% smaller than when I started a year ago. Um, and we've able, been able to achieve these efficiencies um, really just through attrition. Um, and through working in the, the natural progression of the way that our workforce works. We haven't had to, to fire a bunch of people. Um, and we've been really happy actually to, to, be, to start working through our payroll from the bottom up to try to start getting some people's salaries raised. Um, you know, that's a big topic of discussion. And I found that there were people in my office who I, I didn't feel were being paid a reasonable amount of money um, to do what they were doing. I mean, people have childcare and you know, just life expenses, and, and you have to be able to cover those things. Anybody who works in my office, I think, deserves to make enough money to cover those things. So, I guess an, an auditing type question: While your staffing is down, your budget is remaining relatively the same, and just <clears throat> yes, to bring people up to speed where you think they need to be. Sure, and we actually just uh, we have a, a 1.5 million dollar uh, transfer prepared and ready to go back to general budget uh, from our budget from last year. Okay. So, uh, not only are we smaller, but we're actually returning the money that that we have back to general revenue. Well, great. Now, in terms of 
having enough help and getting help, you're working with WVU students, I believe, on a project. Tell us about that. So this is actually maybe my favorite thing we accomplished this year. And so what we found is, is that the economic downturn that we've experienced in West Virginia didn't just hit the state's budget, it hit the cities and counties' budgets also. We're in charge of auditing all these cities and counties, and that is not a free enterprise, right? That's something that costs money, and a lot of our smaller cities, quite frankly, just don't have it in the budget to afford an audit. And so it's been years since some of them have been audited. What we found was is that while we had a shortage of auditors, uh, we simply cannot find accountants to work in our office for the amount of money that we can pay, and cities who couldn't afford to have their audits done. So how do we solve this problem? And uh, my first reaction was, why don't we see if we can have some students do it? So we called uh, Dean Reyes at the WVU College of Business, and we established a sort of a first-of-its-kind externship program through a grad program where we had a, a, a class of 36 students who each got a city to audit as part of their project, and each one, each one of these little groups of students essentially audited a city of the state of West Virginia, which um, accomplishes a couple things. First, free audit for the city, which is awesome. And second, we get to um, find and hopefully recruit the smartest kids coming out of the best business schools in West Virginia. And so hope, my hope is, is that we can show these, these kids that a few years in public service is gonna go a long way at the end of their career. While we might not be able to pay them as much up front, they're going to get an invaluable amount of experience um, that will help them along the way. And, uh, and we just couldn't be happier with the results, and we're really looking forward to moving this program on to West Virginia State, Marshall, Concord, Fairmont State, so that we can have little auditing teams um, in these graduate programs. More all cities. And yes, counties. sir. Uh, it brings two questions. Cities were receptive to this. They were glad to get the help. Oh, they're, it's, it's, been <laughs> it's been very, very well received, yes. Okay. And I have to ask a follow-up question, have they found many problems? Uh, in the, this particular group of cities, they did not find very many problems, no. I mean, there's always little problems, and um, by and large, our, our cities um, are run by great volunteers, particularly the little cities. We've talked about some new programs that are coming out. You have a bill coming out. When uh, one, of the, one of the other programs that I know you have coming up is the, let me make sure I get it right, wvucheckbook.com. Which, which citizens can use to monitor spending. And one of the big projects is the road bond project. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us about that. So um, when the road bond, the, the main road bond funding starts uh, to be sold and, and spent, um, the, the first tile you'll see on our transparency website is for the road bond. And what we've designed is a map of West Virginia broken down by county, and the citizens will be able to click on every county and then see the projects that were promised by the road bond, and they'll be able to see how much was allocated, how much was spent, and where they are along in, in, in the project. And we've been really happy to work with Tom Smith and, and the people over at, at Transportation Highways because they've been very receptive to the idea that, that the spending this money in a transparent way is going to help the citizens, and it's going to help them. Um, and one of the great things about it is it's really going to explain what the road bond is. There's, there's a lot more to it than just the general bonds that are being sold next year. We also have Garvey bonds, Turnpike right. bonds, uh, and then there's two more buckets of money used being, that are going to be used for, um, for local roads. And, uh, and so hopefully this website will be able to educate the public about uh, what's being spent, why it's being spent, where it's being spent, and how it's being spent. And um, you know, like we said before, there is, no greater, uh, there is no greater benefit to the citizens of the state than knowing how their money's being spent. I agree. We had Secretary Smith on last week talking about the project and the job fair coming up. Will any of the information about uh, how many West Virginians are hired or those type of things. Will that be, is that something that you look at or is that outside your That is your certainly route? something that the Department of Transportation and Highways will be able to add to the website if, if they have the information. Uh, and they will have the information. And from what I've uh, gleaned from Secretary Smith, they are um, very actively interested in making sure that their part of that website has a, a, just a ton of information, uh, including pictures and, and uh, uh, of, of progress so that people can really know what's going on. Well. For the people out there, I think the big thing is there's going to be, there is a lot of information. There'll be a lot more information out there. And if you get the chance, visit wvsao.gov and look at the auditor's website and watch for the new programs coming out. I think it will be informative and useful. JB, thank you for coming. Hey, appreciate thank you it. so much for having me. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Appreciate it.